first of all, I'm the, I'm the chair of the working group, um, sort of on the I2B2 side of things. I'm here at Harvard, I'm my co-chair. Um, we've come, um, we have more here from the high, Stan Infrahan. He's from the Transmark side of stuff. Uh, we have about a dozen people right now. I'm going to do a quick introduction about what the working group is, what we're doing, some logistics of it. We're going to talk a little bit about the current state of user interfaces, and then some stuff going forward, and I'm going to try to go through that all quickly. So I'm going to do some just real highlights of what I can be to. We had a whole hour long discussion about this, but I'm going to press this down by like three slides. So what's good about I can be to compared to other kind of tools out there is you build really complex queries. Um, you know, particular order, you can do things like value constraints, a laboratory test, multiple occurrences. You can build nested queries, so you can take the results from one query and then another one. You can put date constraints on things, you can build complex temple queries. The strings of events, multiple orders. You can build arbitrary Boolean queries with multiple and or and not. You can run the queries, and then also some modifiers, and the flavors of applications or diagnoses. You can store your favorite query concepts, and then you can see here to the queries. You have your list of all of your past queries, and you can see the search in that stuff. You can build a query results and breakdown, and out query definition. So I've seen sort of 10 years since uh, we presenting particular code as the original web client. I've seen lots of attempts to rebuild it and redesign it. So there's sort of the current stack that's going on right now, but there's a whole historical set of uh, IP people web clients that are sort of come and gone. And there's really two reasons why they were never successful. One is it's easy to build out sort of a new nice boolean query pool and just tons of libraries and say now I'm moving. Do all, all the other complex components of it. That's where things get complicated. And that's the stuff that makes the user interface always very tricky. So from very simple boolean query, but once you want to try to put the temple stuff, and other things are always get complicated. The other part are the analysis plugins and be able to have backwards compatibility with them. I talked a little bit about yesterday about maybe I can use the web client itself to have plugins and you have like a separate website that is analysis tool you just drag and drop these plugins. Some stuff are really bad in the IP. So the thing that um, pains people perhaps most is to define a concept tool. So I was literally working, I managed IP people at Israel. I had a faculty member who was in my office the other day who was looking at major depressive disorder. There's like hundreds of stuff. There's a bunch of random things here. Some are not seen, procedures. Um, there's no way to really source it or link this back to the hierarchy. You could have mouse over and you try to see the toolkit and then remember where the path was and put that miserable. You can't really, can't really function. Um, and there's some things that you can do it 
in ICP2, but it's just really, really ugly and most users will never be able to figure this out. Now, one of the my sort of pain points on this is modify. So, for example, if you went to a complex medication, so a medicine with a, a dose and a route and a frequency, you can build that out with multiple uh, modifiers and link them by saying this is query timing, do it, but um, users don't know how to so this is what um, when people have that they go to the ITP2 link, they don't directly see the query. So I have them first go to this landing thing. Um, I have to get this information for them. I explain the difference between aggregate query and being able to download data and my needs up that need. We have a group of humans called the Inside Core that can help people manually run queries and extract data sets if they can't do it through the ITP2 interface. And then below the screen over here, all sorts of details about the data, when the last refresh was, and the different start endings are uh, different from the types of data. So you have all this sort of information and based on stuff in the pages before they even get into the query tool. And that's just sort of one example of ways that um, Will wrap ITP to a customized is when they actually install it. Uh, Transmark, if someone wants to show some good, bad, and other things about it. You wish it was there? Yeah, it's right there. So, yeah, first, well, we're originally going to have Becky who's going to do this, but uh, her flight got moved earlier with the weather issues, so unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. I just checked my own kind of like all right, like something up on the back. Yeah, I'll definitely check on there. Do you want to do you want to transfer? This part I think the point was just the yeah. real right, original transmark stuff. I can I can just do a live demo really. No, that would be perfect. Because I want to I want to be going there afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Contrast between the way we're going and what people you have for the three here. Sitting here. In your numeric variables, the dwarf variables, and yeah. Okay. I can pick up for this piece of time. We can use this. You can see the first tool that's required in fire study. I think these two pieces are sort of the most powerful tool from the best market interface. Uh, where you continue to refine your data. So the comparison step, you make your patient test and then being reused in all the other tests. That's what the patient test is. Uh, then select all patients in the study. Uh, so the summary statistics, this is giving you a nice uh, demographic breakdown. <coughs> yeah, drag in anything else that you want here. So you can easily see, play around with the data, see something interesting, maybe you can see it. Not very nice. Kind of in here. But you can just compare those again. Um, so, then the two groups. The limit is the two groups, the smaller two groups. And you go back to certain statistics. Now you get the amount of pairs among the two. And you compare it to the pairs of the two. And you'll see whether men and women are patients. Those are just some statistics. Of course, I will say you can choose directly from the side. Because it's just so easy to do statistics. Um, you are uh, responsible yourself for taking home. Then, once you cross the base, you can. Look at the data, you can excel that over to see that. And variable that you drag into some statistics you'll also hear here. For Excel. Um, I think this is the most powerful part. Um, generally, you just keep using it to refine your application that way. And then, if you want to go deeper, you can do some analysis. So there's a set of R script analysis. Uh, 
uh, in here. It's, it's kind of free to find that there's some things that need to be the default that might be going forward. Those kind of things, they will fix with them. Um, we have something more complex, some stuff that can handle uh, high dimensional data, like uh, heat map or specific data types, uh, the previous code here. This is really basic analysis. Um, then there was a sense of what to make more direct analysis. Smart R. We can take most of them here. And a here. This is prettier and it's directed and Um, and we can uh, see what kind of magic work you can have. This is the precursor thing for that. I think that, that might be good. So the point over here is that on, on the transmark side, the query builder part is fairly simple, but it's a huge library of different tools, uh, analysis tools, data export tools that um, you can take from. On the left, the, the trees look the same. The content is very different. And I can be to the top level things usually, things like demographics, that notes, laboratory that. Here's the top level stuff and you can look different projects and with different groups of patients. There's a lot of parallels between the two things, but there's a Venn diagram. Yeah. Um, it, what, one of the things Becky was going to show is that um, her local implementation of this, sometimes all the capabilities of Transmark can be overwhelming for investigators. And maybe not applicable for the kind of data that you have. So she's actually removed a lot of the um, functionality. And so it's deleting, but just actual configuration in Transmark that allows you to tie or turn things yeah, off. We'll the same here, so they're, yeah. they're very careful. Right. So, you know, my customization about this role was to add some stuff, and the customization here in this version of Transform was to remove some stuff. This sort of just shows how um, uh, uh, sort of both ways of um, uh, of doing things when you actually design it for a real uh, production instance, real use case. Yeah, so it's tricky to move that table here with you to say people seeing the right. Okay. While, while you're up here, can you? Can you show us the going there?
we are cross study by default again. So we're encountering what kind of problems that you're seeing in V2 and time and Yeah. Um, so we so yeah, as I mentioned, the user interface could include handle the new dimension, time series modifiers, and it wasn't a bad idea to look at a new user interface. We want something better than for a while. Um, we wanted something more secure for a while. The transport has we have worked on, on getting for transmart on the on the back end on the API. So we really have to support the API that that's, that's the right part to fill up where someone should get active or not. Transport has to go directly to the database. So that's the next security transition of Um And then, yeah, the go base for example, that was also a very powerful people library. Uh, we started something new, we built an API. Uh, and it's made possible by many different uh, third parties at the moment. Uh, the Elderite National Research Institute, for example, the International Center is the National Center for Pediatric Psychology. Driving them and all the PDF technologies being centralized there. Uh, the screen vendors too. Now you can bring that in time. So, here's um, a demo. This is our um, demo server. So, feel free to go there after our um, And yeah, this is just kind of like the stuff that I want to show. I'll focus mainly on cover selection um, and then quickly. Start. This is your interface. Um, probably looks familiar. You still have the three on the left. And on the right, you have your uh, way to connect the data. Before we come in here, we have three sub processes to connect it. First of all, we want to define our cohort, which patients are we interested in. Then the second step is to get for these patients what data we want from them, which variables. And then um, you can use that and they will save a lot of those. So let's start with the story collection in here. Um, first of all, you can see the different data types in here. Um, you can use historical variables, like this, numerical variables, which are going to be in the combination of security and combination. Uh, we can also work with groups. Uh, You can do this end or constraints, you can do that nesting as far as you want to want to take it. Um, and you can then um, depending on how big your database is, you can let this update on every change or just on the non user here that we have. These are some different data types you can carry on. So that's basically querying on historical and numerical variables. There's some Boolean query in here. Um, and um, maybe also nice to see the new data types. So it's very nice for our heart rate within the study. Yeah, a certain amount of patients included. Selections in there. And then I can select more options. So this is a new star study. We have some time-based uh, We can use basically the star based on different kind of reasons. So we can do, so you can do absolute um, absolute uh, query, time-based queries like this. Um, maybe we can um, uh, more aggressive one, so that's really something which is specific for the uh, for the transport world where we have studies where we have these trial cases is relative fine. Um, <coughs> you want to ask for example everyone who has a heart rate 80 um, at a specific uh one point within the study which is a share kind of data. Everyone who has at baseline of the study the So then I have uh, a bunch of different data types in there. Um, get back to the subject relations later. Yeah, okay. Um, I should mention before the um, previously in front of every concept was uh, study based. 
right now is kind of cross study by default. So you see now when I select it, this is kind of for the line topology. Uh, expressions include so I can you know functionally filter for um, this uh, uh, even within the So maybe I'll bring it then to the entire flow. I think you have now seen an overview of what the story relation can do. You can connect as far as you want. You can query all the different things. So, um, yeah. You can nest a bunch of levels yeah. here in the UI. Um, I2B2 doesn't necessarily support yeah. queries like that, unless you're running multiple queries in your building. Are you somehow, are you actually implementing here, or are you just so allowing people to build the query? So we're using our learning on the track part. The version that we're running on I2B2 can be implemented by the, what I2B2 supports. So, and, um, <laughs> When you update it after during the last update, True. Yeah. Yeah. It's trying to help you with these uh, numbers. Um, okay. So we select it now. We've introduced all the We've the patient. So end of the cell. Perfect. Test, so then we can go to step two. Okay, we've selected these 12 annotations. Now, what do we want to have for the patient? Uh, the update is basically shows the subset of the three that we run data for these objects. Uh, and let's say I'm interested in the graphics here and the local uh, variables. And so uh, 12 annotations. So it's now and when we have that, we can do the table. It's still being worked on. Um, we used to have this nice preview table, which I just showed. Um, but having many different dimensions makes it pretty hard to make. So now we have this kind of dimension director where you can decide for yourself which dimension you want. So right now, you see kind of an observation fact table where we have the study, uh, the concept, the patient ID, and the value. Um, but of course, it would be nice. And we can, uh, we can organize the, the data. So right now we only have three uh, dimensions, so we can have many more. Well, the modifiers are okay. Okay, so we have selected the patient um, test with an observation test here. Now we're going to do some analysis. Um, right now, uh, I'm Boy, um, yeah. I want to make sure we have some time for uh, David and for some discussion. Uh, so, hmm? I would come to you. What could be one, but oh, uh, speed up. a couple more minutes. Maybe. So, quickly show you can do some uh, basic analysis now. Of course, we're also working to get some time. I think that is one more thing I'd like to say, which is data uh, query for study. Um, so we have our patient set, um, and not just can we um, reuse them, so we can reuse previous and restore previous patient set like this, um, but we can also subscribe to the patient set, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, 
you can uh, subscribe daily or weekly, and then uh, once a day, then you can get into the That wasn't from the demo side. Um, yeah, in a few months, um, you can also maybe prepare for the question. Yeah. But I really hope it doesn't become a the right thing. There's a website, clonebear.net. Um, we should probably have a part of what we want to do here is plan out what some of the future meetings should be. I think you could have a whole meeting or multiple meetings just on modify, like how different ways of handling that. That's so complex, both on um, back end and yeah. I had for uh, just for discussion with you. Um, also, if it's okay, or just that ventilation our problem, I should do that. I think these should be topics of yeah. um, like our individual monthly meetings kind of drilling down into the genomic collection and then sample modeling samples. Yeah, so, yeah. Can you do like a five minute version? I can do five minute version. Because it's simple, <laughs> so simple that it's new. So simple. <laughs> right. So, I'm David from Modern Okay. I think we have had. Central queries for a while, uh, and through our collaboration with other users, we found out that our central query okay is a little lacking. That look on it's difficult to find, and but therefore, so we can that can be super important. But we still want to support the current query. Well, maybe that could come now. I would also want to make people. I mean, we need to pick up the people who know money. So we uh, started creating simple, uh, simple projects, which um, uh, simplify the functionality of the people that allow people to uh, be a time to take the So let me, I'm going to go straight into the demo and show how it works. So typical in the computer, uh, the very tiny drop down that I found. Uh, <coughs> I now will present you with basically like canvas as it is up a concept here and start the new example. And for our example, let's start with the object. Once we drop in there, uh, sort of familiar looking boxes show up from uh, very panels. And here we're going to capture the idea that whatever you put in here. Uh, what happened after, I'm oh, sorry, before what I've been saying here. So if you put it out of density here, you're going to say, I want out of density to occur before, for example, uh, so this is your very simple sort of two concepts of verbs. And you can, you can further constrain this and go out the two concepts that you're going to say. The default is a star of the first ever observation A. The first before a star of the first ever observation B. And the drop down boxes are all the values you change it. All the events have a duration. The first ever observation is uh, not that good. Instead of the first before, that's the first combo before a time can be good. Then you can further constrain it by. The phase along the risk Now you notice that in this particular drop down, you don't have the normal query able to do that. And the way we deal with that is to simply back and forth. So you notice the text change is going to be additional observations. I'm making medical economy. And just like a normal panel, when you put different concepts and the board, and here we can now have this panel. You can set the constraints. So this panel, find the solution. And finally, 
And you get an idea of how this is pretty much the work that you can. Instructions are there once you use get in there. And also, there is a turn on control button here allows you to turn on it. But it's not an issue of the user. It's only going to turn on the over. So it's a very bad over. And once you get to the end of the sentence, in that process, so once you get through them, you know the data. And in case you need to do the most feature version very quick. For example, push it and push it to the classic version of the open core and push it to the second one. We can see that back and forth. Once you play the simple mode, then I'm sure that those things will be served under the fiction, not to the OEF, not. Rather than just clearing at the patient level and then clearing on a specimen, um, they would describe it. The patient wants it more than I can do, especially when you stuff that 
all the way on the system. I can be to use when the entity is fake and the characteristics of code associated with that. In um, transform picker instances, there's other kind of stuff there. In the um, draw to tell here is pretty like environmental um, picture instance where you're querying by like zip codes and pollutants by that. Um, you're using a biobank kind of version. Um, another kind of version of that could be in um, you have family information, like you want to know about the patient's diagnosis of patient's father or mother had, or their twin. So this is something we built in when you're Yeah, I, I think there's some different approaches to doing that, but um, your mother and father are both a the same kind of uh, There's multiple things here. Um, yeah. So uh, one is when you're, when you're using these real concepts, so there's a state range of statements of it, special characteristics of the population. There's a all kind of fact count on the normal kind of called the health rate utilization aspect of it. So um, instead of um, other native information about concepts or anything. <laughs>
and allow query, and then also a plan for some sort of graceful degradation of query uh, design or, or a, a query entry or of results uh, that comes back. Because some individuals, or, or I'm sorry, some deployments are going to have uh, different infrastructure that you are going to be built on. They're going to have different uh, quality measures for the level of data that they're collecting, um, whether it's going to be perhaps um, uh, entered data or um, automatically generated data um, or whatnot. So I, I think that it's not directly related to a user interface aspect, but it's something that if we're going to create a user, user interface that's going to be usable across the the ecosystem that is and perhaps will be and will continue to be uh, the ITB2 transfer community, I think that we should, from a user interface perspective, uh, look at how we can um, kind of standardize all the different approaches to visualizing um, theory design, data exploration, as well as results presentation, and then come across some standards that we can all agree upon, even if we have our own particular courses that we're getting. Getting, getting toward the end here, I think it's good. I think there's so many good ideas here. I think as we start to put together, we'll put together a list of the future meetings and topics. I think we have a whole meeting just on this kind of stuff, like um, in the data and features that would be useful for these systems to have and help people better use the data. This is just UI issues. Some of these things we talked about here, we can't actually build a UI unless the back end tool is very well. Um, uh, we should have probably another discussion about some new interface things we developed to help this one. Just created a whole back end distribution visualization of a patient cohort, which patients that are a little data versus one that have a lot. Um, with some of those um, temple things. Okay, this is this is good. This, I think it's still at least a few months of meeting here. Yes, localization is one. There was also a request from um, the Shrine community. This a different Shrine UI and I can use the UI. Kind of differences, but um, the, the Shrine community would like to use the standard. I can use one to say, but those two things got in. Um, so there was a request to uh, add. Um, I don't have a login page. There's a single sign on the portal. So I'm taking away the front login page and I won't hack it anywhere. I'm just doing my website and those kind of direct to email. And I know other people have done similar kinds of stuff. So um, methods um